Dorn is the hottest region of Westeros and the least populous one. The region is rocky, mountainous and dry and features the only desert on the continent. Most of Dorn south of the Red Mountains is an arid wasteland. Eastern Dorn largely consists of dry stony soil ill-suited for agriculture, while Western Dorn contains deserts of red and white sand. Dorn's rivers provide some fertile lands and even during a long summer there is enough rain and other supplies of water to keep Dorn habitable. Also, it does doesn't snow in Dorne even during the harshest winters. Inland water is almost as valuable as gold, and wells are jealously guarded. The major Dornish river is the Greenblood in southeastern Dorne, which is formed by the Waif and the Scourge near God's Grace. The southern coast is some 400 leagues long. It is ridden with cliffs, whirlpools, and hidden shoals, with few safe landings. During the Dawn Age, the children of the forest referred to the desolate Dorne as the Empty Land. The first man settled Vastaras by crossing the land bridge across the narrow sea called the Arm of Dorne. During their great war with the First Men, the Children of the Forest allegedly broke the arm with the Hammer of the Waters in an attempt to stop them coming. First Men houses who established themselves as prominent kings included House Dane, the Kings of the Torrentine, House Fowler, the Kings of Stone and Sky, and House Ironwood, the Blood Royals, who styled themselves High King of Dorne. Dorne has had a violent history, particularly with the Houses of the Red Mountains, who lived by raiding across the borders into the Dornish marches, feuding with each other endlessly. The various Dornish kings, the kings of the Reach and the Storm Kings, fought border wars beyond count and made countless raids across mountains and marches even when at peace, leading to their great enmity. During the Andal invasion of Westeros, most Andals avoided Dorne, aside from few adventurers who succeeded in establishing their own houses in the region. Centuries ago, Dorne was a coalition of first men and Andal petty kings and lords, with no ruler strong enough to seize control of the entire region. 700 years before Aegon's conquest, the Ruinish Wars, a series of wars fought between the city-states of the Ruinar and colonies of the Valyrian Freehold, forced the people of the Ruinar to flee their homeland along the Ruin in Essos. Led by their legendary warrior queen Nymeria, they left in a fleet of 10,000 ships, eventually making landfall at the mouth of the Greenblood in Dorne, where she took Lord Morse Martel as her husband. House Nymeros Martel has ruled Dorne since. Dornishmen differ both culturally and ethnically from other Westerosi due to the historical mass immigration of Ruinish people and their relative isolation from the rest of Westeros. Dornishmen have adopted many Ruinish customs on top of their first man and nan origins. For instance, the lords of the ruling house Nymeros Martel styled themselves prince and princess in the ruinish fashion. The Ruinar brought their own gods with them to Dorne, but they have largely disappeared in favor of the faith of the Seven. Descendants of the Ruinar who have not assimilated into Dornish society are known as orphans of the green blood. The orphans still mourn the loss of their distant homeland in Assas, and so continue to practice the traditions of their river-faring ancestors. They consider themselves to be orphans as they are of the Ruinar and have been orphaned from their mother, the River Ruin, which in their faith also holds a divine state. Status. Dornishmen have a reputation for hot-bloodedness and sexual licentiousness, and are still viewed with some mistrust and rivalry by the people of the neighboring Dornish marches and the Reach. Dorne is roughly equal in military strength to the North and Vale. House Dane of Starfall House Dane of Starfall are one of the most ancient houses in the Seven Kingdoms, claiming ancestry dating back 10,000 years to the dawn of days. The first Dane is said to have raised Starfall on an island at the mouth of the Torrentine River, having tracked a falling star there and found a stone of magical powers. His descendants thereafter became the first man kings of the Torrentine and lords of Starfall. The great sword Dawn was forged from the heart of the fallen star found by first Dane and has possibly been wielded by Danes for 10,000 years. The blade is as pale as milk glass, unlike dark Valyrian steel, but is similar in strength and sharpness. The Sword of the Morning is a title given to a Dane knight who is considered worthy of wielding the legendary greatsword. Unlike other houses who have ancestral swords, House Dane does not pass its sword from lord to heir. Only a knight of House Dane who is deemed worthy can wield Dawn, and the Sword of the Morning is envied throughout the Seven Kingdoms. The last known user of the sword was Sir Arthur Dane.
The Danes have taken part in many battles between Dorne and the Reach. In particular, they have been killing oak hearts for thousands of years, and King Samvold Dane, called the Starfire, once burnt Old Town. The last Dane king, Vorian Dane, known as the Sword of the Evening, was defeated in Nymeria's war and sent to the Vol. Afterwards, the Danes supported Nymeria against King Yorick V Ironwood. Nymeria's third husband was Sir Davos Dane, the Sword of the Morning. However, Nymeria, Princess of Dorne, was later succeeded by her eldest daughter by her first husband, Morse Martell, not her son by Davos. Sir Arthur Dane, the Sword of the Morning and the deadliest knight of Aerys Second Targaryen's Kingsguard, led the campaign against the Kingswood Brotherhood, an infamous outlaw organization that gained recognition by kidnapping several nobles. The Brotherhood was sheltered by the small folk of the Kingswood, preventing the royal forces from finding and ending the outlaws. To defeat the Kingswood Brotherhood, Arthur Dane gained the trust of the small folk of the Kingswood by paying for what he and his forces took and taking their grievances before for King Aerys II Targaryen. The Smiling Knight was Bandit's fiercest fighter, and in a climactic clash with bandits, the young Jaime Lannister, Sir Arthur Dane, and Sir Barristan Selmy faced off against several notable outlaws, including the Smiling Knight. Sir Jaime Lannister recalls that the Smiling Knight was his generation's Sir Gregor Clegane in terms of man's eagerness to best him in combat. According to Jaime, the Smiling Knight was a madman, cruelty and chivalry all jumbled up together, but he did not know the meaning of fear. Sir Arthur Dane fought an extended exchange with the Smiling Knight until the Smiling Knight's sword broke. Arthur paused the fight and allowed the outlaw to take a fresh sword. The Smiling Knight did so, but remarked that it was Arthur's famous sword Dawn that he truly desired. Arthur replied, Then you shall have it, sir. In their second exchange, the Smiling Knight was slain by the Sword of the Morning. Afterwards, Sir Arthur Dane knighted Jaime Lannister. In a tourney at Storm's End, Arthur broke 12 lances against his good friend Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, losing to the prince. According to Viserys Targaryen, Arthur Dane was the only knight in the realm who was the peer of his brother Rhaegar, Prince of Dragonstone. Arthur's sister, Lady Ashara Dane, was one of Elia Martell's handmaidens and came to the great tourney at Harrenhal with her. There, she danced with a member of the Kingsguard, Lord John Connington, and Eddard Stark. Sir Arthur Dane died at the Tower of Joy, killed by Lord Eddard Stark, aided by Lord Howland Reed. Afterward, Eddard returned to Dane's family sword Dawn to Starfall. Given Dawn and the news of her brother's death by Eddard, Ashara Dane threw herself into the summer sea from the Pale Stone Sword Tower. Her body was never recovered. According to her sister, Lady Illyria, Ashara loved Eddard. Many believe her, or the wet nurse Villa, to be the mother of Eddard's bastard, Jon Snow. The current Lord of Starfall, Edric Dane, is the nephew of Arthur. Edric was sent to squire for Lord Beric Dandarion. Edric Dane accompanied Lord Beric Dandarion in his mission to bring Sir Gregor Clegane to justice. When their band was ambushed at the Mummer's Fort, Beric was killed. Edric defended his body, however, allowing it to be recovered and later accidentally revived by Tauros of Myr. The Danes are considered stony Dornishmen because of their fair skin, unlike fellow countrymen more influenced by the Roinar. Danes have been observed with dark blue or purple eyes, yet Danes do not have Valyrian roots. Instead, House Targaryen of Valyrian descent does have Danes' blood in their veins. Lady Diana Dane was wife of King Makar I Targaryen and the mother of Daeron, Aurion, Aemon, Aegon, Diella, and Rey Targaryen. She died well before Makar's ascendance to the Iron Throne, thus she never became Queen Consort. House Dane of High Hermitage, a cadet branch of House Dane of Starfall, House of Landed Knights and vassals to the noble branch of the family, House Blackmont of Blackmont. The Blackmans have long fought against the marcher lords of the Dornish marches to the north. King Benedict Blackman was defeated in Nymeria's war and was one of the six kings sent to the wall by Nymeria. The Blackmans also unsuccessfully supported Dornish House Ironwood against House Nymeros Martel during Nymeria's war. Because of the location of their seat, it is considered that one of the Vulture Kings may have been a Blackman. The Vulture King was the name taken by a number of outlaws who rose against the Iron Throne, using the Red Mountains as their base. House Corgile of Sandstone The Corgiles were adventuring Andals who settled in the deep dunes and sands of Dorne. 
They built sandstone after they fortified the only well around for 50 leagues in the deep dunes of Dorn. During Nymeria's war, the Corgals supported House Ironwood against House Nymeros Martel. It was rumored that Lord Corgile arranged the murder of Lord Lionel Tyrell during Lionel's service to the Iron Throne as governor of Dorne. After Dayron Targaryen's initial victory over Dornish forces, Lionel moved with his train from one keep to the next, chasing rebels and keeping the knees of the Dornishmen bent. It was his custom to turn the lords of the keeps he stayed in out of their chambers and sleep in their place. One night at Sandstone, finding himself in a bed with a heavy velvet canopy, he pulled the sash near the pillows to summon Avenge. When he did so, the canopy opened and a hundred red scorpions fell upon him. His death sparked new revolts and in a fortnight all the work of the young dragon, King Daeron, was undone, eventually bringing the death of King Daeron himself. Lord Commander Corgile was the predecessor of Lord G.R. Mormont as commander of the Night's Watch. He once visited Winterfell with an escort of a dozen men, including Mance Raider, though back then Mance was still a ranger of the Night's Watch. Apparently, House Martell have strong ties with Corgiles, since Oberyn Martell was fostered at Sandstone as a child. House Uller of Halholt the Ullers were adventuring candles who settled near the source of the Brimstone River in the middle of the desert. A Dornish saying is, half of the Ullers are half mad and the other half are worse. The Ullers supported House Nymeros Martel against House Ironwood during Nymeria's war. After the death of her first husband, Nymeria was married to Lord Uller. Hellholt is a grim and stinking place and is named after an event in which rivals were invited to the castle, locked within and burned to death. At the start of the First Dornish War, Lord Harlan Tyrell's army found the others had fled the Hellholt rather than give battle. When the Dornishmen rebelled later in the war, Harlan and his garrison disappeared in the sands after leaving the Hellholt to retake Waif and Sunspear. After the Dornish attacked Nightsong and Old Town, the Targaryens answered by unleashing dragonfire upon Dornish castles, including Hellholt. Rhaenys Targaryen and her dragon Miraxis were lost in battle attacking the Hellholt. The queen's body was never recovered by the Targaryens, however, and some said she was tortured to death by the others. House Fowler of Skyreach. The Fowlers were first man kings and titled themselves King of Stone and Sky and Lords of the Wide Way. The Princess Pass, historically called the Wide Way, is one of the principal overland routes from the Reach and the Stormlands to Dorne. It is located in the Dornish Red Mountains. The Princess Pass is not as steep nor as treacherous as the Bone Way. Structures along the route include Skyreach, Kingsgrave, and the Tower of Joy. Skyreach Castle was carved into the stone and is known for its lofty perch and soaring towers. Along with the Danes and Ironwoods, the Fowlers were among the most powerful of the Dornish kings before Nymeria's war. The Fowlers often warred with the marcher lords to their north. For instance, King Ferris Fowler led 10,000 Dornishmen through the wide way to the Kingdom of the Reach, but they were turned back by King Garth Seventh Gardener. Following the defeat of King Garrison Fowler, who was then exiled to the Night's Watch, the Fowlers sided with the Martells against the Ironwoods during Nymeria's war. Since then, they have feuded with the Ironwoods, the Wardens of the Stoneway, east of the Prince's Pass. During the First Dornish War, Lord Fowler led a Dornish host which burned Nightsong and took hostages from the Marcher Castle. The Targaryens retaliated by unleashing their dragons on Skyreach and other Dornish castles. The words of House Fowler are, Let me soar. House Ironwood of Ironwood House Ironwood is an ancient family who once ruled half of Dorne as the kings of Ironwood, titled as Blood Royals, with domains significantly greater than House Martell of Sunspear, a fact the Ironwoods let no one forget. House Ironwood established Castle Ironwood in the high valleys and green foothills below the peaks, and seized control of the Stoneway, also called the Boneway, the second of the two great passes into Dorne. This is reflected in their title, Warden of the Stoneway. The path runs north past the River Ville and ends at Summerhall in the Dornish Marches. Ironwood lands were also well timbered and possessed of valuable deposits of iron, tin and silver. The ancient Ironwood kings often fought with the Storm Kings. At the battle by the Bloody Pool, Yoren Ironwood was turned back by King Durin the Young, as it was said, Durin have dammed the river slain with Dornish corpses. When the Rhoynar came to Dorne with Nymeria aboard her 10,000 ships, they joined House Martell, increasing the size of Lord Morse Martell's host tenfold. 
Nymeria married Moors and named herself and her husband the Prince and Princess of Dorne, asserting their dominion over all of Dorne in the ensuing Nymeria's war. King Yorick V Ironwood was supported by his bannermen, houses Jardain, Will, Blackmont, and Corgyle, amongst many others. In the ninth year of warfare, Morse Martell died at Yorick's sword in the Third Battle of the Boneway. Nymeria took control of the Martell armies, however, and it took another two years of fighting before Yorick bent the knee and was sent to the wall. The Ironwoods became the most powerful bannermen of House Nymeros Martell, though their relationship is uneasy at best. The Ironwoods joined Bittersteel against the Targaryens and Martells in three of the five Blackfire rebellions, even though one of the original goals of the rebels was to remove the Dornish influence at court. When Oberyn Martell was 16 years old, he was found at bed with old Lord Edgar Ironwood's paramour, and they fought a duel. Although it was only to first blood, Edgar's wounds festered and he died shortly afterwards, originating rumors that the Red Viper's blade had been poisoned. Oberyn fled to the free cities in exile to repay a blood debt. Prince Doran Martell, Oberyn's elder brother, later sent his second child, Quentin Martell, to foster with Edgar's grandson. Lord Anders Ironwood. Quentin served at Ironwood as page and squire. He chose to be knighted by Anders himself instead of his uncle, Oberyn. During the War of the Five Kings, following Prince Doran's instructions, Lord Anders musters and maintains an army in the Boneway. Sir Cletus Ironwood and Sir Archibald Ironwood accompany Quentin Martell in his mission to find Daenerys Targaryen in Assas. Since his son and his cousin are traveling with Quentin to Assas, with all probability Lord Anders had been entrusted by Doran Martell with the critical secret of his support for the Targaryen restoration. Cletus is killed by pirates, but Archibald arrives in Marine. The words of House Ironwood are, We guard the way. House Will of the Bone Way. The Wills have long fought against the Lords of the Dornish Marches. In the First Dornish War, Lord Will ambushed the forces of Lord Oris Baratheon as they tried to assault the Boneway. The cunning Dornishmen launched a night raid, raining rocks, arrows and spears from above. In the end, the Boneway was blocked both before and behind, and Oris Baratheon was captured by the Will of Will. Oris Baratheon remained the Will's captive for years until the Targaryens ransomed him and his men back, paying for each man's weight in gold. When the captives were freed, however, the Will had their sword hands chopped off, so they could not be used again against Dorne. It is said that after the release of Oris and the other lords, the war entered a new stage, as King Aegon I Targaryen was by now intent on revenge. The infamous deeds of the Will of Will during this war are still remembered. The Will of Will's son, Walter Will, fought beside the Vulture King during the reign of King Aenys I Targaryen. During the Vulture Hunt, the campaign to end the first Vulture King, at the Battle of Stonehelm, Walter was captured by Lord Oris Baratheon. Walter's father had chopped off Oris's sword hand during the First Dornish War, and in retaliation, Oris chopped off Walter's sword hand, then his other hand, followed by both feet. He deemed this usury. During the final stage of the conquest of Dorne, King Daeron I Targaryen was attacked and killed under the pretext of a peace banner, and Prince Aemon Targaryen was imprisoned by the Wills. Lord Will gave Baelar the Blast, the new king, a key to Aemon's cage, which was suspended over a pit of vipers. Aemon begged Baelor to leave and seek aid, but Baelor felt the gods would protect him. While singers liked to say the vipers bowed their heads to Baelor as he passed, not daring to strike because he was pure and holy, Baelor was bitten, though sources differ on how often, ranging from half a dozen to half a hundred. Aemon pulled Baelor from the pit into the cage and climbed to safety with the king upon his back. Aemon carried the unconscious king along the boneway until they reached the safety of first House Dandarion at Blackhaven and then House Baratheon at Storm's End. House Manwoody of Kingsgrave Kingsgrave is placed amidst the prince's pass, guarding access to Dorne. The arms of the house and the name of its castle refer to the fact that the founder of the house slew their king of the reach. King Albin Manwoody, a troublesome madman, claimed dominion over the Red Mountains of Dorne when the Ruinar arrived in Dorne. Nymeria and her husband, Prince Morse Martell, defeated King Albin. He was subsequently sent to the wall in golden fetters, together with five other defeated kings of Dorne. Sir Michael Manwoody came to court with Princess Mariah Martell, 
following her marriage to Prince Daeron Targaryen. He became a trusted servant to King Daeron II and eventually married Princess Elena Targaryen. In his early years, Michael studied at the Citadel. He was a cultured man of great learning and wit. On several occasions, Michael was sent to Braavos to negotiate on behalf of the Iron Throne to the Iron Bank of Braavos. There are letters recorded of correspondence between him and the keyholders of the Iron Bank. While it is Michael's name and seal on the letters, the handwriting appears to belong to Princess Elena Targaryen. Michael and Elena were wed with the blessing of King Daeron II, shortly after the death of Elena's previous husband. Their marriage was a marriage of love, though. According to Princess Elena, she had fallen in love with Michael because of his passion for music, not his intelligence. Michael would often play the harp for her. When he died, Elena commanded that his effigy be made carrying a harp instead of the sword and spurs which is commonly used in the knight's effigy. Though their marriage was strong, Elena and Michael had no children together. The Tower of Joy was a round tower in the northern edge of the Red Mountains of Dorne and lay in the Prince's Pass. The structure was named thus by Prince Rhaegar Targaryen. At the end of Robert's Rebellion, Lord Eddard Stark and six of his companions, Howland Reed, Lord Willem Dustin, Ethan Glower, Martin Cassell, Theo Wolf, and Sir Mark Rizval, approached the tower in search of Lyanna Stark, Eddard's sister. They found it guarded by three members of the King's Guard, Sir Arthur Dane, Sir Oswald Wendt, and Lord Commander Geralt Hightower. Eddard and Howland were the only survivors of the resulting battle. Lyanna Stark was found dying inside the tower by her brother, Eddard. Afterwards, Eddard had the tower torn down to build cairns for the eight deceased. Vulture's Roost is a ruined castle. It lies near the source of the Vil River, House Santagar of Spotswood. It is a house of landed knights sworn to House Martell. The Santagars were adventuring candles who formed their own kingdom in Dorne during the Ando invasion. Sir Aaron Santagar, the master at arms of the Red Keep, escorts the royal retinue that is attacked by the small folk of King's Landing after the sailing of Princess Marcella Baratheon to Dorne. The angry mob pulls him off from his saddle and bashes his head with a stone. After the riot of King's Landing, Aaron's body is barely recognizable. House Waif of the Red Dunes The Waifs were adventuring Andals who settled in the hills east of the deep dunes and sands of Dorne. The nearby river soon took their name. The head of House Waif has the title Lord of the Red Dunes, Casella Waif was a member of House Waif who became the third mistress of Aegon IV Targaryen, although prior to his sitting the Iron Throne. After the submission of Sunspear during the conquest of Dorne, Casella was one of the hostages sent to King's Landing as she was the daughter of Lord Waif. She was escorted by Prince Aegon, later known as the Unworthy, who kept Casella a hostage in his own chambers. After the Dornishmen revolted and killed King Daeron I Targaryen, Aegon, by then bored of her, returned Casella to her place along with the other prisoners. The new king, Baelor the Blessed, pardoned all the hostages and personally took them back to Dorne. Casella never wed or had children, and in her old age she was consumed by the delusion that she had been Aegon's one true love and that he would soon send for her. House Gargolin of Saltshore Doran Martell, the Prince of Dorne, squared for Lord Gargolin in his youth. House Illyrian of God's Grace. The words of House Illyrian are, No foe may pass. House Jardine of the Tor. House Jardine was one of the Yandel houses who came to Dorne during the Yandel invasion of Westeros. At some point, House Martell bent the knee to the Jardine kings of the Tor. But by the time of Nymeria's war, House Jardine was among the bannermen of King Yorick Ironwood and fought against Morse Martell and his allies. The words of House Jardine are, let it be written. House Talland of Ghost Hill Ghost Hill Castle has chalk white walls that shine against the deep blue of the Sea of Dorne. The Talands successfully resisted the dragons of Aegon the Conqueror during the War of Conquest. The Lord Talland at the time sent out his champion to face Aegon. After Aegon slew the man, he learned that the man was Lord Talon's mad fool and that Lord Talon himself had escaped. In later days, the Talons would take a new banner, showing a dragon biting his own tail, with the colors green and gold in memory of the motley of their brave fool. Prior to the dragon, the Talon banners displayed a ghost. The Planky Town is a trading town that lies at the mouth of the Greenblood River, near the Martells' seat at Sunspear, and is the main port of Dorne. 
Its location at the mouth of the Greenblood also means that it commands all river traffic, as most of Dorne's population is centered around the valleys of the Greenblood and its tributaries. It is called Planky Town because much of it is actually composed of barges left permanently tied up at anchor and then lashed together. Despite its relatively small size, Planky Town nonetheless sees brisk long-distance trade with other parts of Festeros as well as foreign lands. Due to its location at the southeastern tip of the continent, it is very close to the three cities, especially Tyrosh, Mir and Lys, so foreign merchants are a very common sight there. Disproportionate to its size, Planky Town is therefore one of the main routes through which trade and cultural products often pass between Westeros and the three cities. Hall's Dolt of Lemonwood, a knightly house. Shandystone is an abandoned holdfast in Dorne. It has fluted columns and triple arches. The holdfast was abandoned when the well went dry about 200 years after Aegon's conquest. Gaston Grey is a black bleak island in the Sea of Dorne. Its crumbling old castle had been used by House Martell as a prison for the vilest of criminals and traitors who are sent there to waste away. It is considered a horrible place to be sent. House Nymeros Martel of Sunspear. It is one of the great houses of Festeros and is the ruling house of Dorne. Nymeros indicates of the line of Nymeria, but generally it is simply called House Martel. House Martel was founded by Morgan Martel, an Ando adventurer. Morgan led the defeat of the local first men, including houses Vade and Shell. Both houses were among the dozen first men houses of the Greenblood, who chose a High King of Dorne from amongst their number. Eventually, both houses were conquered by the Martells during the Andal invasion and later extincted. But at first, the Martells ruled only a strip of land 15 leagues long and 10 leagues wide. They did not rule as kings, but were cautious vassals of kings from House Jardane, Illyrian, and Tyrenwood, as well as petty kings of the Greenblood. At the time of the Rhoynish Wars, the Martells were one of the lesser ruling families of Dorne, which was a collection of feuding petty kings and lords, even as the other regions of Festeros began to consolidate into larger realms. When Nymeria, the warrior queen of the Rhoynar, came with her people to Westeros from Assos in 10,000 ships, the Martell lands were dwarfed by those of House Hirenwood. However, Nymeria took Mors Martell, lord of the Sandship, as her husband and, combining their strength, the two managed to unite all of Dorne under their rule in Nymeria's war. House Nymeros Martell has reigned since. The Martells of old used the spear as their emblem, while Nymeria and her Rhoynar used the sun as theirs. When Nymeria wed Lord Mors Martell, the symbols were combined into a gold spear piercing a red sun on an orange field. The union of their people saw the Martells abandon many of their older Andal customs in favor of those of the Rhoynar. Nymeria named Mors Prince of Dorne instead of King, and their lands and title passed down to their eldest child, their daughter, regardless of Nymeria, marrying again after Mors' death and giving birth to a male child. Sunspear, also known as the Old Palace, is the capital of Dorne. The old palace was built after the union of the Rhoynar with the Dornishmen, as the Sandship had been the seat of House Martell prior to Nymeria's war. It is surrounded on three sides by the sea and by the Shadow City on the fourth side. Sunspear is a vault settlement protected by three massive winding walls encircling one another and containing miles of narrow alleys, hidden courts and noisy bazaars. The threefold gate, where the gates are lined up one behind the other, avoids the labyrinth, instead allowing straight passage on a brick path to the old palace. One of Sunspear's chief structures is the original stronghold of House Martell, the Sandship, which is large, ugly, dun-colored building that looks like a drummond. Over time, towers in Rhoynish fashion sprung up around the keep. Two other chief structures are the tall and slender Spear Tower and the Great Domed Tower of the Sun. The Spear Tower is a hundred and a half feet high and can house noble prisoners. In the Tower of the Sun, the high seats of the Prince of Dorne can be found. Two twin seats, one with the Martell Spear inlaid in gold upon its back, the other bearing the blazing Rhoynish Sun. These two towers are the first things visitors see when they arrive at Sunspear, whether by land or by sea. After Aegon I Targaryen waged his war of conquest, he came to Dorne. In the first Dornish war, his army was bled dry by the guerrilla warfare in the desert, a situation in which his dragons were of little use. Deciding that conquering Dorne would be too costly, the conqueror opted to leave the Martells as sovereign princes. House Martell kept Dorne independent from the Targaryens for two centuries, the only one of the seven kingdoms to manage such a feat. 
In year 110 after conquest, the Martels joined the Triarchy, an alliance of the free cities of Mir, Lys and Tirosh, known as Kingdom of the Free Daughters in the war against Prince Daemon Targaryen in the Stepstones. Daemon's brother, King Viserys I Targaryen, spoke of wedding with his daughter Rhaenyra to the Prince of Dorne as a way of finally uniting the Seven Kingdoms, though ultimately this did not occur. After repeated failed attempts at conquest, most notably under Daeron I and later by Aegon IV, Dor did eventually join the fold through marriage between the two houses. The alliance was a dual one, with the future King Daeron II marrying Princess Miria Martell and Prince Marin Martell later marrying Daeron's sister Daenerys. During Daeron II's reign, the Red Keep assumed a decidedly Dornish flavor due to the influence of his Martell wife. This was one reason that many nobles opted to rise against his rule in the first Blackfire Rebellion. The Martels thus defended his claim against Daemon First Blackfire. After their victory, Marin and Daenerys fulfilled their betrothal, formally bringing Dorne into the Seven Kingdoms. Since then, the Martels have ruled Dorne in the name of the king on the Iron Throne, while keeping the title of Prince of Dorne. In year 273 after conquest, Prince Oberyn and Princess Elia Martell traveled with their mother and her consort to Casterly Rock to visit Joanna Lannister, meeting potential suitors and marriage alliances along the way. The intent was to fulfill their mother's wishes that the Martell and Lannister children would marry. When they arrived, Joanna had just died giving birth to Tyrion Lannister. Lord Tywin Lannister slighted the Martells shamefully, ignoring them for a few weeks before offering Elia the dwarf baby Tyrion a further slight. Instead of marrying Jaime Lannister, Princess Elia, the Draegar Targaryen, Prince of Dragonstone, a slight to Tywin who had hoped to marry his daughter Cersei to Rhaegar. When Rhaegar won the tourney at Harrenhal, he named Lyanna Stark the Queen of Love and Beauty, not Elia. A year later, he apparently abducted Lyanna, sparking Robert's rebellion also known as the War of the Usurper. Although the Martells were unhappy with Rhaegar's betrayal of Elia, they still supported King Aerys II Targaryen's bid to retain the throne, since the Mad King held Elia and her children hostage in the Red Keep. The Dornish provided a quarter of the royal troops at the Battle of the Trident. The Martells lost many soldiers there, including Prince Lewin Martell of the Kingsguard. When King's Landing fell, Princess Elia and her children were brutally murdered by two Lannister knights, Gregor Clegane and Amory Lorch, during the sack of the city. Oberyn Martell made motions to continue the war in the name of Viserys Targaryen, but the diplomacy between Prince Doran Martell and John Arryn prevented further conflict. Though House Martell swore fealty to King Robert Baratheon after the war, they have harbored anger and resentment towards the Lannisters ever since and have adopted a mostly isolationist policy towards the other great houses as well, unless necessary, preferring to deal instead with the free cities. Prince Doran Nymeros Martell, also known simply as Doran Martell, is the head of House Martell, the Prince of Dorne, and the Lord of Sunspear. Married to Lady Melario of the Free City of Norvos, he has three children, Arion, Quentin, and Tristain. In his early fifties, Doran is a cautious, pensive, and supple man. He is prone to think long on the matters before him, cautiously thinking on every word and every action. He has a bad case of gout, which has recently left him unable to walk instead having to rely on his wheeled chair, or a palanquin, to move around. Because of the early deaths of his siblings Olivar and Morse, the multiple miscarriages his mother suffered, and the difference in age with his surviving siblings, Elia and Oberyn, Doran was raised alone. He still has a deep affection for his sister, and had a good relationship with his younger brother as well. As a consequence of series of factions during Robert's rebellion, Doran's brother Oberyn attempted to raise a rebellion for Viserys during the year after the rebellion, but the new hand of the king, Lord John Arryn, traveled to Sunspear to return Prince Lewin's, Doran Martell's uncle's bones, and spoke with Doran, ending all talks of rebellion. However, Doran desired revenge for the deaths of Elia and her children as well, and for this purpose worked closely together with his brother Oberyn for years, planning on destroying all that Lord Tywin Lannister holds dear, before killing him as well. To this end, Oberyn traveled to Braavos, where Sir Villain Derry had fled to with Viserys and Daenerys Targaryen.
A secret pact was made, with Oberyn signing for Dorne, and with the Sea Lord of Braavos as a witness, betrothing Dorne's daughter, Ariane, to the exiled King Viserys. Eventually, due to his sickness, Dorne moved from Sunspear to the Water Gardens, where he was far away from curious eyes and stayed there, not wanting his enemies to know how feeble he has grown. The closest thing to a true city that the Dornishmen have, the Shadow City, is no more than a queer dusty town. Built against the wall of Sunspear, the Shadow City spreads westwards. Closest to Sunspear's walls, mud brick shops and windowless hovels can be found. Stables, inns, wine sinks and pillow houses are found west of those with walls of their own. More hovels have been built against those walls, which has led the city becoming a labyrinth of narrow alleys, homes and bazaars. The Palace of the Water Gardens lies three leagues away on the coastal road. The Water Gardens are a palace with gardens and waterworks that serves as a private retreat to House Martel. The gardens are located on a beach next to the Summer Sea. Pale pink marble paves the gardens and courtyard. Terraces overlooking the numerous pools and fountains of the water gardens, shaded by the blood orange trees, can be reached via a fluted pillar gallery leading to a triple archway. The water gardens are pleasant in autumn, hot days, cool nights, the salt breeze blowing in from the sea, and fountains and pools to admire and play in. Children from all areas of Dorne are sent to the water gardens to foster, where they play together at the beach, pools and fountains, and in the water. The water gardens were raised by Marin Martel, Prince of Dorne, as a gift for his new bride, Princess Daenerys Targaryen, to mark the union of Dorne with the rest of the Seven Kingdoms. Daenerys began the tradition of hosting children at the water gardens, initially the kin of lords, but eventually also small folk. Prince Oberyn Nymeros Martel, known as the Red Viper, is a member of House Martel and is Prince Dorne's hot-headed younger brother. He has eight bastard daughters, called the Sand Snakes, the four youngest of which are by his current paramour, Elaria Sand, who is a bastard daughter of Lord Harmon Uller. Oberyn is a forceful, lusty man with a quick wit and barbed tongue. He studied at the Citadel for a while and apparently forged several maester links, but eventually grew bored and left the Order. Oberyn had traveled the world and even founded his own mercenary company. He had a very close relationship with his sister Elia, and they were inseparable as children. The words of House Martel are unbowed, unbent, unbroken. Besides the above mentioned, there are many other houses in Dorne. Most of them were among the dozen first man houses of the Greenblood, who chose the High King of Dorne from amongst their number. Three of the houses were destroyed after a generation of warfare, following a disputed election back in the days, however. The remaining houses were conquered during the Andal invasion, and since then had little influence. Thank you for the attention. See ya!